Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan, this is Super Review, and today we're gonna take a first look at a couple of different, I think, budget IEMs that I think have got pretty big weeb appeal. And if you're here watching, there's a pretty good chance you're a weeb, and that's cool with me. So the two IEMs that we got up on deck, first is gonna be this. This is the Tanch Gym Tanya. And if you've followed my channel in the recent history, I've reviewed the Tanch Gym Hana as well as the Darling, and they were both two IMs that I liked quite a bit, and this is the company's latest. Unlike the Darling and the Hana, this, however, is a pretty budget IM. This is around $23, which is the cheapest IM I've checked out on this channel in a long time, but I don't know, I'm pretty interested in it, especially given the track record that I've that I've had with the, the HANA, the Darling, and even the Oxygen, which I haven't reviewed, but I have heard it. So I'm interested to see what you get for 23 bucks. Today we're gonna unbox it, find out what comes inside the box, and then I'm gonna try and throw up on my measurement rig and we'll see how this thing graphs. But that's not it. Today we've also got this, which is the Stardust. You could call it the Moondrop Stardust, although the Moondrop brand doesn't appear anywhere on here. Um, basically what this is, let's see, about a year ago I reviewed the Moondrop SSR, and then later they came out with the SSP, which was a slight tuning variant of it. But kind of in the background, at least you know for folks like me that are in the United States, they actually released this. This is the Stardust, and it seems to be some sort of combination, some branding combination with a, with a company Moeyu or something like that. I don't, I'm not really very familiar with what's going on here, but this thing hasn't been available in the United States. But I was able to, to get a hold of one. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna talk you through the process, but it's available on Taobao. There's a link in the description. I'm not gonna help you buy it because it's a pain in the butt, but I ended up getting a hold of one. And we'll find out what comes inside the box, and I'll go ahead and measure it. I suspect this is gonna look just like a Moondrop SSR, but maybe we'll be surprised. So this video is not gonna be a review. I have not heard these IMs yet. We're just gonna unbox them, find out what's inside, hopefully throw them up in the measurement rig. And I say hopefully because I was having some troubles with it earlier. We'll see how well it goes, but we'll see how the, the frequency response looks like and compare it to some other IMs. And that's what this video will be. If you're interested, however, in the review of these IMs, well, first of all, the Stardust, if it sounds like the SSR, as I suspect it will, I probably am not planning on doing a full review of it. The Tanya, however, that's an all new IM. I am planning to do a review. So if you want to check out that review, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, ding the YouTube bell, YouTube will let you know next time I'm live. And yes, I am live right now. If you've got any questions about either of these IMs, leave them in the live chat. And at the end of the video, we'll have a little conversation. But for now, let's go ahead and dive into the box of Let's start with the Tanya. Oh, that was actually a pretty good spin, but I did it off camera. I missed the camera. All right, so here we have the Tanya. I expect this is gonna be a pretty simple package. Now, let me make sure we are in decent focus. There we go. And yeah, like I said, 23 bucks. I know it's a single dynamic driver. We'll find out if there's anything else of interest here on the back of the box. Uh, we've got your, uh, ostensibly that's your distortion rating. Okay, yeah, here we have it in English. Uh, distortion rating of minus, of less than 0.3%, okay. Impedance of 16 ohms, okay, doesn't tell me too much. Frequency response doesn't tell me too much. Sensitivity, 112 dB. Uh, that could actually be relatively sensitive, but I don't know. That doesn't tell me a ton. Let's go ahead and find out what's inside this box. Hopefully I just push it out. Ugh. Oh my gosh. So as a reminder, the previous Tanch gems that I talked about and why this one's kind of interesting, the HANA was around 170 bucks, the Oxygen is around $300, and the Darling was $420. This at $23 is a pretty interesting departure for them. Packaging, I gotta say, not a letdown. This is pretty decent. Okay, that was a letdown. That should have helped me remove these things, but I won't be too picky. Pull this thing out, and it does have a pre-installed cable. Oh, what is going on here? Let's just dump everything out. Let's do this super untidy-like, and then we'll make it tidy afterward. Um, all right, let's see. Where do we start with? Let's start with the paper stuff. We've got a warranty card. Excellent. We've got, I don't know, instructions or something. Anyone want to read that? Oh no, that's even more information about the warranty. There you go. 
uh, in case you're concerned about your $23 earphone. Here you've got, I don't know, some sort of like certificate of authenticity or something. Don't expect to see that on a $23 earphone. And then here you've got actually an interesting inclusion, which is some backup filters. This seems to be a pretty common trend with some IEMs now is coming, you know, a lot of IEMs will have a filter sort of up over the nozzle that ostensibly prevents ear gunk from getting inside of your earphone. And for a long time, uh, if you had got ear gunk in your earphone, you had to try and clean it out and probably wouldn't be that successful. But now they are starting to include these filters, these replacement filters, which is interesting. And these look just like other Tonch Gem filters. It doesn't appear to be, at least obviously, any different than the other ones, but I don't know. I know people have done some experimentation with filters and gotten what they claim to be different sound out of their earphones. Not a thing I've tried myself, but we'll check that out. Uh, we also do have, it looks like two different sets of ear tips, which is interesting. It looks like they're, okay, they might actually be a little bit different. Let's see what's going on inside here. Uh, it looks like there might be a wide bore and a narrow bore. If I'm reading through the package correctly. And in fact, these, yeah, that does seem to be what's going on here. That's interesting. So these tips are, I don't know, unlike any tips, like I don't, I haven't seen any other Tonch Gym tips like this. Maybe the oxygen comes with these, these same types of tips, uh, but that's actually a pretty decent silicone rubber on them. And then you can see, and we hold the mediums up to each other. So you can see the, the difference in the bore size. That's quite zoomed out. So here you go. So it looks like you got a wide bore over here and then a more traditional sort of medium bore. Definitely not quite a narrow bore. Let's throw that over here, get the wide bores separated. And uh, look at how itty bitty this tip is. That is for the smallest of ears. Let's get these things over here and I'm trying to get through this as quickly as possible because well, we've got more to unbox still. This is frankly more than I would have expected from a $23 earphone. Uh, inside here, uh, it looks like some sort of carrying pouch of some sort. It's impossible to get out, so we'll just leave it inside the box forever. No, we'll just outsmart it and go at it from the other side. And you've got a little Tonch Gym carrying pouch. That's actually pretty nice. A little bit large for such a, what looks like a small earphone, but it is well made. Interesting, and it's got a drawstring on top. And then finally, let's dip into the earphone itself, which I think I had started to say, um, this is actually on a pre-installed or a fully permanent cable. Most of Tonshin's other IEMs, and in fact, most IEMs in general, they've got removable cables, but as you go down in price range, it's not uncommon for the cable to be just permanently affixed, and that is what we have here with the Tanya. So there you go, this is what the IM looks like. The cable is, I'll say on first impression, you know, it's a little memory prone, but it doesn't seem too bad if I'm perfectly honest. We'll see how well this, you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta work out these kinks here with time and hopefully they do, but otherwise, I don't know, let me give it the old roadie wrap, see how well it stays in place. It's a thinnish cable, but I don't know. It's maybe about, you know, on par with something like, this is a reference to very old Super Review videos, but cable's kind of about on par with something like a, a Kodungari brass in terms of thickness. I think it's not quite as well behaved as that cable, but there you go. So there is your Tonsh Gym Tanya with your itty bitty small buds. Let's take, go ahead and take that off so we can take a look at the the nozzle, and there you go, there's your pre-installed filters. Again, if you get gunk on those, Tonch Gym did provide spare filters so you can swap them out. I've never actually done that procedure myself. I would be pretty, pretty worried about messing it up, but then it looks like oh, there might even be some sort of filter or mesh on the back of that. Curious to see if this thing will sound different if I plug that up with my fingers. Uh, but yeah, there is your Tonch Gym. Tanya, let me go and throw it in my ears real quick for a quick fit test. I did see someone mentioned that this thing's actually really hard to tell left and right apart, um, which is not super uncommon, unfortunately, with these bullet style ear tips. But 
There you go, there's what the Tanya looks like inside my head. Pretty small fit. You can also wear it over ear, and this honestly is probably how I will end up wearing it. Um, wearing it over ear like this just makes it a little bit more secure. You can see if I tug on it, my ear, my ear ends up kind of playing interference and preventing the cable from getting tugged out. And then also wearing it over ear usually prevents microphonics. If the cable runs up against my shirt, um, having that cable wrapped around my ear dampens the sound of the microphonics. So that is the Tanch Gym. Tanya, um, I mentioned I was having difficulty measuring, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and unbox the Starfield first, and then we'll try and measure them both at the same time, uh, and either fail at the same time or succeed at the same time. And I, I have a good feeling about it. I just, I just know I was having some trouble. So let me go ahead and throw all this stuff aside and then break out the Stardust, which if I'm perfectly honest, I am unreasonably excited about. Um, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I reviewed the, the SSR about a year ago, and it's a $40 earphone. Uh, it's definitely in the budget range, and I've got a lot more expensive stuff, but for some reason, I still love that earphone quite a bit. So when I found out about this, the Stardust, um, I was, again, kind of unreasonably excited about it. It just looks cool. Now, it does cost more, and I don't know exactly what the, the uh, kind of the... the domestic market price of this thing is, but I paid around, I want to say $70 for it. So I don't know, almost twice as much as the original SSR, but it does come in a very fancy and holographic box, which I think it's got pretty cool design on it. This might be the coolest of the Moondrop characters, although knowing that this is, and there's that, uh, that Moeyu brand it seems to be a collaboration with them and they seem to be uh, I, I i don't know much about it actually if you're in the live chat and you know anything about moeyu i would be pretty interested to know but let's see if there's anything interesting on this box apart from the art i mean there are your qr codes for you enthusiasts out there and in fact moeyu's got a qr code and maybe if i was a qr code enthusiast i would already know about them but i don't uh, i expect these specs are going to be exactly the same as the ssr um, which is that, so they claim 115 dB uh, at 1K Hertz, but this is the VRMS uh, methodology for measuring that. So I actually know that the Starfield, or sorry, the, the Stardust, the SSP and the SSR, that whole line, is actually not that sensitive. I mean, it's still an IEM. It's not super hard to drive or anything like that, but as far as IEMs go, it can be a little bit difficult, but let's see what's actually inside this box. And very much like the packaging of the original SSR, they're laid out quite neatly, although you might already start to see that the cable that these come with is different than the cable than the SSR comes with. Which is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a little bit more interesting, but I also really like the cable on the SSR. Let's see, wow, we've got an interesting collection of goodies over here. Let's see, another QR code. Leave that one up there. I don't want to overstimulate you. Uh, there is some sort of warranty registration card, which is cool. Got a little carrying pouch with a set of tips inside. And I think this carrying pouch is about just like what came with the, the SSR. But it's actually been a while since I did that unboxing and I kind of forget. Let's see. And then in here, we've got our set of tips, which are unsurprisingly these are traditional Moondrop tips. Uh, they are pretty decent tips, although, yeah, they're actually not bad tips. You could be happy with these tips, but I ended up finding that final E-type tips f make these the most secure in my ears. And that's what I've optimized for in my personal life, if you were curious. Here's a QC card. It did pass quality control. Excellent. would hate to have gotten one that didn't. And then here we've got an interesting looking, looks like a, a tie for the cable. See if I can open this without triggering the ASMR crowd. So yeah, that's a little interesting cable tie with a unique design on it. You can see it's got a snap here so that you can ostensibly hold your cable wound up and we'll put that to use in a little bit. But before that, let's take a look at this curious collectible card. 
Prisma Azul, eat your heart out. You're not the only one with a card with a serial number on it. So this is actually pretty interesting. The date of birth, ostensibly, of my Stardust was 12-8. Wait, what's 12-8? Okay, I, I don't know how to interpret this, but uh, I assume that is my serial number here, which is 002595. Not quite as early as my Prisma Azul serial number. But that is a pretty nice little card. It is plastic for those, however, who are curious. All right, so there is the accoutrement. Let's take a look at the IM itself. And... Uh, as I've kind of already said up to this point, I'm pretty confident this is going to sound just like a Moondrop SSR, but it looks cool. And for me, if, as a fan of the Moondrop SSR, that was enough of a reason to go out and buy it. Is it a good reason? Probably not, but it was enough for me. Um, and like I also suggested, this cable that it comes with is not the stock SSR cable. In fact, this does appear to be the same as the Moondrop Starfield cable, which I know some people had some issues with. Um, I don't know, for me, it's a little bit maybe on the thin and wiry side, but this cable does end up working out pretty well with time. I've pretty, been pretty happy with it. Let me go and throw on some medium-sized tips. Actually, before I do that, let's punch in on this and see that really cool Starfield design or Stardust design. Maybe you're starting to see why I was so excited about this thing. It's got this, you know, kind of vibrant but dark blue color with a gold painted pattern. It's got the word Stardust on it. And there's just something about this that kind of reminds me of uh, an old school Subaru Impreza STI, which uh, maybe that's a car reference that people don't get anymore. But back in the 90s, thanks to Gran Turismo, I was a big fan of and always wanted one. So when I saw this, for some reason, that, mean, that meant that I really wanted this IM. Um, there you go. There is the SSR on its cable. Let me go ahead and give it, again, the old roadie wrap. See how well it sits, but I can already tell you again, from experience with this cable on the Starfield, uh, I find it to be a pretty decent cable. Although, if I'm perfectly honest, I actually think the SSR cable is better. Although you can tell it's a pretty good match here for the Stardust. All right, so actually, I guess I'll go ahead and give this thing a fit test for those who haven't seen my SSR review. Uh, this is one of my favorite fitting IAM shells. It's so small. You can see here inside my ear how small it is. This ends up being like one of the best sleeping earphones I have, and that's frankly a big reason why I've used my SSR so much since I got it about a year ago is it's just, I love the form factor of this thing. And now I've got that same form factor with a blue design. Um, maybe a waste of money for most people, but for me, I was curious enough. And there's a chance that it sounds different, although I think it's a small chance, but we will measure it in just a second to see. All right, so let me try and set up my table here. Um, if you were just here for the unboxing, that's it, we've done it. I'll see you later, but if you want to see what the frequency response of these things looks like, I'm going to attempt that next. Uh, and by attempt that next, let me, I got to get some stuff set up over here. So over here on this screen, I have got um, Squigglink. And if you're not familiar with Squigglink, this is uh, my measurements database. If you're interested in checking it out yourself, just go to squig.link. Uh, and you can get the latest measurements that I have made. What I have over here is just a locally run version of it um, that we will use for displaying the frequency responses because, um, I, like I mentioned, I was having some issues with my measurement rig before. I'm gonna have to take this measurement on my laptop, hopefully upload it over to my other computer and we'll be able to see it in real time, but we'll see how well that goes. But, before I do that, let me move this stuff off the table and make as much room as possible for the Stardust and the Tanya. And then over here, we'll pull in my microphone so we have something to look at, which I'll be perfectly honest, is not much, but 
Maybe you've got something to work at. And then over here on my computer, I promise I'm using this to make the measurements. All right, let's see. Um, let's start with the Tanya because the Tanya promises to be something new. So I'll plug that in over here, find my left channel, which as someone suggested is difficult to find. There is on the back of it over here, a uh, very, very small print. There's an R there and an L right there. So this is our left channel. We'll throw that into here like so. And then I will attempt to make my measurement. All right, measurement has been acquired. Let me see if I've got, ooh, it looks like I've got my insertion depth a little bit too deep. So let me find um, actually a wider tip to put on here. And these ones were starting with the narrow bores, which I think I'm fine with for now. Uh, maybe at a later time, I will go ahead and measure these with both the narrow bores and the wide bores if people are interested in that. But let me throw on another narrow bore. And the reason I'm redoing this measurement, and I would normally show this to you in real time, but again, because I've got this on a different computer, I'm having to sort of dual wield here, and you're not able to see what's going on on my computer. But the uh, my resonance peak is, when I measure it with the medium tips, came in at around, at around nine, 9,000. And I would like to get it closer to 10,000. Any better luck that time? It's a little bit closer, but that is still pretty close to 9,000. So interesting. So I'm gonna measure this now one more time. This will be my last attempt. did I do with that one? Okay, that one was pretty good. But I think the seal in here is so light that it's not, the base doesn't look great. Okay, is this the best one? Is this the one? I think this is the one that we're gonna go with. All right, so let me touch Jim. Tanya, save this. And I apologize, there's not much for you to see, but I promise I'm doing stuff on this computer screen over here. Okay, save. Now I gotta export it as a text file. is thrilling, I am sure. Touch Jim Tanya L. Save. Now that should be fully uploaded. So now if I punch over to here, all right, we are now looking at my measurement tool. Let me see if this file is syncing automatically. It is, it looks like it has synced automatically, okay. I refresh this, ostensibly I will have loaded that file. Let's see. Here, Tanch Jim Tanya. There you go, there's your frequency response of the Tanch Jim Tanya. Um, as you can see, this is actually pretty bassy. I am. Um, if you want to compare it to something like the oxygen, right? Here's what the frequency response of the oxygen looks like in red. And you see that was also itself a pretty bassy I am. Um, but the, the Tanya, it's got some pretty forward upper mid range and especially lower treble, um, but big mid bass and into sub bass, a little bit of sub bass roll off, but not too bad. So interested to hear what this thing sounds like. Let's see if I flatten this against my super review target, 
you're curious kind of what my preference is, it would be this dotted line here. Um, flatten it against that. It looks like we're looking at, I don't know, basically some, some version of a V-shaped IEM. So there you go. There is the Tantra Gym. Tanya, let's go ahead and check out a measurement now for the Moondrop SSR, AKA the Stardust. Save that one. I accidentally, accidentally called it the wrong IEM, but it was the right IEM. Um, and for those of you who are interested in checking out these measurements, um, they are not uploaded to Squigglink right now in real time, but they will be probably within about, I don't know, 10 minutes after me ending this live stream. So if you want to check them out for yourselves, head over to squig.link and they will show up there. But for now, let's go ahead and finally measure the Moondrop Stardust. And drum roll, please. All right, folks, you cannot see it yet, but I can see it. And I guess I know the answer. Does it look different than the SSR? But should I tell you? Uh, let me go ahead and save this measurement real quick. Uh, no, Stardust. File export measurement is text. And drop Stardust L. All right. Come over to my other computer and check out whether or not it has officially synced yet. Looks like it's synced now which means we can pop over here and let me pull up the SSR. All right, so here's our measurement of the SSR. And then down here, I've got the measurement of the Stardust, which we will lay on top of it and finally answer the question, it, does the Stardust sound different than the SSR? And interesting, that could just be down to unit variance, but um, there is actually pretty considerably less at around 3K being measured here. So I'll tell you right now, this is a measurement that surprises me. I surp I'm surprised to see that difference. Uh, this seems to be a larger difference than what I would expect from unit variance. Um, so what I'm gonna do after this video is I'm going to also measure the right channel to make sure it's not just a channel imbalance. Um, and then I will also play around with um, some other things just to make sure that this is this is a repeatable measurement because that is more different than I expected. Uh, let me go ahead and turn the SSR a different color so it's more obvious. So the SSR here in orange and then in blue, this is the Stardust, which does appear to have a little bit less of that upper mid-range forwardness. Very interesting. Um, let me make sure I've got this thing on the right screen. That was, I just confused the heck out of myself. But yeah, I think that's really gonna be the end of this video. Um, we'll have a chat with the live with the live stream crew here uh, just before I depart. But yeah, that's the unboxing of the Tanya and the Moondrop Stardust. If you're interested in checking out either of these IMs, I do have links in the description down below, including a link to Taobao where you can find the Stardust. But again, I'm not gonna help you buy it because that was, that was difficult. Um, anyway, if you like this video, if you found it useful, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ding the YouTube bell, and then I'll see you on the next live stream super review. Until then, I don't know, join the Discord server and have a chat, and I'll catch you later. All right, live stream crew, let me catch up with what's been going on. It is, what is it, Thursday afternoon. I gotta do some grocery shopping in a bit. But this is a little bit earlier than my usual live streams. Hopefully we got some, some new faces around. Captain Cake, how's it going? Nice to see you, and sorry I beat you to uh, the Tanya unboxing. 
Bogdan Florea, sup, how's it going? Transient Snail, nice to see you here. Cool Asian Bro, hi, how's it going? David K, how you doing? Koi Fish, what's up? What if what if you're a weeb? There's nothing, there's no, there's no shame in being a weeb. Um, I've definitely I think I was a weeb before weeb was a was a word, um, which I guess is just telling you that I'm a little bit old. I'm about 38 and I grew up in the 90s and watched some anime. Um, what were my favorites? I liked uh, Gunsmith Cats was actually pretty good. FLCL or Fudikui. Um Those are good ones. Ninja Scroll, that's a, a really old school one. That's kind of my reference. And then, I don't know, I, I pretty much fell out of anime after FLCL. I think that was kind of the last, the newest anime that I fell in love with. Krayo's Minds, and finally someone does the Stardust. Yeah, I, this has been an elusive earphone. You know, I found out about it almost a year ago. I knew that it was a thing and I tried to buy it, but I think it sold out before I could figure out how to use Taobao or actually how to use Superbuy as sort of a purchasing proxy through to, to buy from Taobao. Anyway, it's complicated, uh, but I failed last year. And then finally, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I, 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 I successfully navigated Superbuy and made my purchase. And now I've got a Stardust. Sai, how's it going? Verdant Sun, you're saying nice box. Which one are you referring to? I assume you're referring to the box here on the Stardust, which I agree, this is a pretty cool box. Not just like, I mean, I, I like the, the iridescent coloring to it, but I also think this artwork is pretty cool. This, I think, is the best, the best looking of the Moondrop boxes, in my humble opinion. Alex Hong saying, looking forward to measurement of the Tanya. You ordered one and it's still on the way. Cool. Ishan, how's it going? Nice to see you. Sai, you're saying the packaging, I think we're referring to the Tanya. Um, the packaging is at least a lot better than KZ products. Yeah, I was actually pretty, pretty impressed with the packaging on the Tanya. I mean, I don't know how much that stuff matters. I end up throwing away my boxes. So I've got way too many IMs to store all those boxes, but I don't know. It's it's nice to to, to think that the manufacturer cared about the product when before they sent it to you. Audio fool, I do not think that Tanya is named after Tanya Harding, although it sounds like you're also a 90s kid. So Ishan, you're saying it's your birthday in a week. Happy birthday, early birthday. Uh, and you're confused, should you buy the Tin T2 Plus, the Blonde, BLO3, or the Tin T3? It's your first IM and you wanna be a good one. My recommendation in the budget space, I think I've kinda got like three top recommendations. My personal favorite is the Moondrop SSR, which is what this Stardust is based on. Um, it is, I don't know, roughly a neutral sound signature. It's probably overly forward in the vocal range, but I don't mind that too much. It's just, it's got a really nice, surprisingly good, uh, especially for a budget I am. Like it's it's um, stereo imaging, it's separation, it's layering, and like a nice, nice decent 3D effect. What it doesn't have is a lot of bass. I do think the bass on it is actually a really good quality bass, but it's not a lot of bass. The Blonde BLO3, on the other hand, is one of my other top picks in the sort of budget space, and it has a lot of bass. So if you know that you want a lot of bass, definitely, like the Blonde BLO3 is a really easy recommendation. Um, I don't love, I personally don't love the tonality of the Blonde. I mean, I think it's actually pretty good for a bassy IM. It's just more bass than I like. I know a lot of people like bass, and so they tend to gravitate toward things like KZs. I think the Blonde BLO3 kind of just destroys KZs and just, just go for the Blonde if that's what you want. Now, if you want something maybe in the middle, still with a pretty hefty amount of bass, but not so overwhelming, the Tin Hi-Fi T2 Plus is kind of that in-between. Um, it's, it's sort of, yeah, I think it's somewhere in between, like the kind of bright neutral SSR or the very warm bassy uh, Blonde BLO3, there is that Tin T2 Plus is that, I think, pretty nice middle ground. David K's take, 
is that the T2 Plus blows away the blondes, which for my preference, I also prefer the T2 Plus um, to the blondes just because it's not so overwhelmingly bassy. But again, if, you're, if you know that you just want a lot of bass, the blondes do it and they do it pretty well, if I'm perfectly honest. Toss Ninja Sticks, man, knocking out these reviews lately. Man, I've got, I've got a lot, I've still got a lot of work ahead of me, so. Whew. Deep breath, but um, for those who are interested, some reviews that will be upcoming on this channel, I am planning to review the, the, the Tonch Gym Tanya. I'm also planning to review, I've got the File FH5S, which I've been listening to for some amount of time, but I've actually been spending more time burning it in. And we'll do a video talking about burn-in, um, hopefully pretty soon. But so the FH5S, that'll be coming up pretty soon. I've got the Hibby Crystal 6 still on deck. Uh, I've got a new DAP, a new budget DAP. It is the X-Duo X2S. Very cheap little budget digital audio player, kind of like a, I don't know, maybe a, a spiritual successor to the Sansa Clip that I just got in. I'll be doing a review of that. Um, trying to remember what else I've got. I've also got the final B3, which is an IM that came about came out about a year ago. So I haven't been in a rush to review it, but I do have that on deck and I'm planning to review that as well. So still quite a bit more to come. Stay tuned, but I'm glad someone's noticing. Link Hacker asking about the anime. So yeah, just I, I described earlier. I, I don't really I don't really watch much of anything anymore in terms of like shows. Uh, I watch stuff on YouTube and that's about it. Mostly I listen to podcasts. It's not a lot of anime in my life anymore. Martin Ferreira, nice to see you again. Oh, and Sai, you are you are clarifying on the Moeya brand. You're saying it's a brand that collaborates with a lot of Vocaloid artists making merch for them, essentially. That's interesting, okay. Yeah, I noticed that, so this, this, uh, this Stardust, um, I, again, I bought this on Taobao, and there are a bunch of different packages of it, like different combinations of accessories and stuff, and the one that I bought, I didn't even know, but it actually came with a little plastic stand of a Moeyu character. Um, I don't have that here because I don't think it's actually related to Stardust, but I don't know. Oh, unstable. So you were explaining that the 12 and eight, um, 12 and eight on the card are referring to the 12th day of the eighth month of the Chinese calendar, but which year? I mean, I assume last year, but wouldn't you think that the year would be more, more important than the date, than the, the day? I don't know. Big Boss, I see you say that the you're pointing out that the Stardust has a glossy finish and maybe that makes it resistant to chipping. So I don't know that I would necessarily um, have that optimism. I personally, so I know starting with, I think it was the Moondrop Starfield. It was Moondrop's, I guess, first painted metal I am. Some people had issues with the paint chipping on them. Um, I got, gotta be honest, like I have the Starfield, I got it a year and a half ago or so, and I don't have any chipping, but I also don't use them that heavily. So that's the sort of thing that I'm probably not gonna be the, the person to discover it because I'm usually using so many different IEMs. That said, I've got a handful of Moondrop IEMs that are painted now at this point, and none of them have any paint issues, so I don't expect I will have any issues with the Stardust, but I also expect if you did have issues with other ones, the Stardust is probably, I don't know, just based on Based on what I'm seeing here, I don't think it's going to be any new paint technology over what they've done in the past. And Elizabeth, you said that you've never heard anyone complain about the Stardust chipping, which is probably true. But how many people have you heard that have the Stardust? I assume it's, it's a pretty small number. All right, and Grant, Alex, Hong, you both got the Subaru Impreza reference. Yes. 
Martin Ferrer, you're still waiting for your SSRs. Existence is pain. That's okay. Waiting is fine. It's, uh, you can do some other things. Ali Hajiz from Qatar, how's it going? Nice to, nice to have you. Hopefully, I don't know, maybe this time of day worked a little bit better, although I assume it's still pretty late in Qatar. Go-to gear guy saying, honestly, the Stardusts win the cool factor. And Dawson Ninja Sticks, I appreciate you uh, being very enabling of my unnecessary earphone collection. Saying curiosity is never a waste of money, still free as far as I can tell. Okay. And David K, yes, just to clarify, this body here on the star, the Stardust is exactly the same as the SSR. In fact, if anyone's interested, nah, I'll just, I'll just say check out um, squig.link. There's a, an interesting aspect to the build here of this, this body. Down here on the nozzle, you see that vent? I think that's gonna come through. There's basically a little hole right here that is a vent. And if you block that vent, you can pretty significantly increase the base response of the SSR, the SSP, or an, I assume here, the Stardust. How much base are we talking? I mean, all right, I will, I will show it up on, on screen. Let me th throw to here. All right, so here we've got, let me remove the Stardust for now. Here we've got our stock SSR um, measurement. Right, and just for consistency's sake, that's what measurement two looks like, or sample three, sample two, sample, right? So they all look basically the same. Uh, but here's what it looks like when you block the vent. Look at that, look at that Chad Gigabase. Holy. Uh, and if we actually pull up, I'm kind of curious now, the Tanya measurement, because um, that was a pretty bassy response. We can see that that Tanya, even though that's a pretty bassy response, is still not even halfway to the response of the uh, uh, of the the SSR with the blocked vent. Um, so, yeah, if you want if you want Gigabase on your SSR, you can get it. Um, I don't think it sounds very good, but you can get it. Uh, Martin, you said you missed the part of the pricing. How much are these? The Stardust I paid around seventy dollars for, I believe, uh, but that included, you know, some fees to super buy and shipping, like relay proxy shipping. I don't know. This is probably, I would guess, around sixty bucks in the domestic market. And then the Tanya, which I don't even know where I put that. I put that over here. It's actually only twenty-three dollars. Maybe $25 if you get it with a microphone, but mine doesn't have a microphone. Very, very cheap. catch up with chat as best as possible. Sorry for the downtime, folks. Uh, Avo Joshi asking, does the final A4000 soundstage and imaging have any benefit over the campfire Andromeda? Um, I'll be honest, I have not made that comparison myself. Uh, I have listened to both of them, but at very different times. So, I don't know, I don't think, I know the final A4000 has kind of got a reputation for having a, a big soundstage, and it does, like its tuning does lend itself that way. It's just very, very bright in the treble. Um, I don't think it's like, I don't think it's worth seeking out, in my personal opinion. Um, the Andromeda, however, it, it does a, a really good job. It's just a lot more technical than the A4000. Um, the, the, the image that you get from it is not just going to be, you know, kind of big and blown out. Um, it's just a lot more concrete, I suppose. Maybe a way to describe it. 
yeah, I don't know. That's, that's a rough comparison for me to make, man. I'll be honest. Link, I have not watched Initial D. I think that one, that one became big after I was sort of out of anime. Uh, an omnivore saying, speaking of domestic exclusive IMs, I know you love balanced armatures, so check out the Tita IM. I am not familiar with that one. Um, you got a link or something? I'd be interested in checking it out maybe. Neil the Grateful Dad asking for a good choice of IMs to sleep on a pillow sideways. I mean, you're looking at it right here. This is one of the best sleeping IMs that I've got. Ali Hajiji asking, um, any idea about the Sennheiser IE900? I would love to review the Sennheiser IE900, which if you hadn't seen that, that was an IEM that got announced, I think, I think it was last week. And it's a follow-up to the IE300. I did a review of the IE300, um, very V-shaped IEM, but pretty fun in its own way. Uh, and really fantastic fit. It looks like the IE900 has the same fit, but in a all aluminum shell. And the tuning looks like it's pretty similar too. Am I gonna review it? I, I would love to review it if Sennheiser is interested in sending it to me. However, it's a $1,300 IEM, so I'm probably not gonna buy it on my own for review. Omar saying, Ola Mark, uh, can you tell me if you have any music set list for analyzing IEMs or headphones? Probably songs for soundstage and other. So yeah, actually, if you go to my YouTube channel and click on the playlists tab, I have a playlist called reference music. I think that's what it's called, or maybe it's just called reference. That is a collection of songs that I think do an excellent job of showing off your audio equipment, whether it's good or for bad. I think that set, um, that set of songs is pretty good. And if you want to have like an idea of what kind of music I listen to, I think that list is pretty representative. I'm always listening to new stuff, so I don't keep that list quite up to date with what I'm necessarily listening to right now, but I do think it's got, it's got a little bit of everything. Vitor Costaneri asking about the Blonde BL05S. I actually... I have the Blonde BL05, but I never actually heard the O5S, so I don't have an opinion on it. Uh, Xter is asking, can I show the Tanya versus SSP in comparison graph? Yeah, I can bring that up real quick, but I will also remind you that it is available on squig.link if you want to check it out for yourself. Um, obviously, I don't have the Tanya quite up there right now, but we will soon. You mentioned the SSP, so search for SSP, bring that up. Uh, and we have got now way too many IEMs here. Let me hide the SSR, hide the vent blocked SSR. And this is Tanya. I'll put the Tanya in red and the SSP in green. So you can see that the Tanya has got less of that upper mid-range peak that you get in the, SS, uh, the SSP, and it's got quite a bit more bass. So it should be, based on this, uh, it should be a warmer tune. Let me reorient myself again. This is much easier when I was able to take measurements on one screen. Audiofool, what's my current favorite IEM at any price? It's probably my Moondrop S8, uh, which I've just got a new cable for. It's a pretty, pretty Chad cable. Let me, let me pull it out real quick. For those who are interested in, in cable porn, let's throw this stuff to the side. Take a look at my Moondrop S8. So 
So this uh, was a $700 IM. I, I actually picked it up used for a bit under 500 bucks. Um, but this is my favorite IM at the moment. And this cable is not the stock cable, but this is a cable I bought aftermarket and I am pretty, pretty chuffed with it. It is a nice thick cable. I don't have a ton of room here to demonstrate it, but it actually even behaves pretty well, which is not too, not too shabby for a thick cable like that. Uh, Noel J. Estacio asking, how do I feel about the base on the SSR? I actually quite like the base on the SSR. It's not a lot, but it's got a nice punchiness to it. It's very tight and it's surprisingly tactile for such a small little I am. Uh, and Elizabeth asking to take a look at the Tanya compared to the Darling on my rig. Okay, I think, let's go over here. I gotta do this a little in between because I'm sharing screens. Yeah, it's not that interesting, but all right, let's take a look at Tanya. Actually, let's just pull up Tanya Jim IMs. Pull up the Tanya and then the Darling. This is how those two compare. Uh, so Tanya in red, quite a bit more base. It looks like the mid range is a little bit less full. Although this, this tendency here, this kind of dip in the upper mid range is a thing that I see frequently in my measurements that I don't necessarily see in other measurements. So um, take that with a bit of a grain of salt, but it, it does look like um, what you're looking at here is you've got a little bit more of that lower treble presence. It's going to make it, you know, it's going to keep it, keep it from sounding too muddy um, from this bass, my guess, but uh, definitely is quite a bit more bass than what you would expect with the Darling. And the Darling itself is not like a bass light earphone. Uh, the Darling has got a fair amount of bass itself. Oh, Recode, interesting. So you, you also have the Stardust, you're also able to measure it, and you said that yours also has a little bit less upper mid-range than the SSR, interesting. So maybe it's not just a, a, measurement, a measurement anomaly, maybe it's real. I'm interested to spend some time listening to it. Martin Ferrer, have a good evening. Thanks for stopping by. Danny Lee asking Monarch or SA. I much prefer the SA personally for a number of reasons. I mean, you can go back and watch my review of the Monarch. Um, one, the Monarch just doesn't actually fit my ears. So I found it kind of painful to, to listen to the Monarch for more than about 20 minutes. But even then, um, it's just, it's too much bass. It's, it's a little disjointed for my tastes and, and kind of distracting. Oh, and an omnivore, I see you saying Linsol Euro, Eurosfine, which is a, a cable that um, is very similar to this cable. And in fact, I'm guessing that it's the same OEM that manufactures them. This one, however, I got on AliExpress, not from Linsol, um, a little bit cheaper. I think I paid 60, 65 bucks. But yes, it is a beautiful cable. I don't know what the specs are on the cable. I can say that, and this is related to the file FH5S and the, the burn-in that I was talking about and some other stuff that I think I'm gonna do a video on, late, on, on soon. I did recently measure the impedance of a couple of cables that I have. And, and this is a practice that I've not really done before. I'm not super confident that I know what I'm doing, but I got some measurements and the impedance of this cable was actually pretty low. Uh, I forget exactly what it was. So let's actually, let me see, I, I might still have it up here. The impedance of this cable I measured as, nope, I don't have it anymore. I think it was around 0.1 ohms, which is about, about, about as close to zero as you're gonna get from a measurement. Um, apart from that, I don't know what other specs you're looking for from a cable. I personally don't really pay attention to cable specs.
uh, Olmstead asking, am I going to check out the Prometheus? I, I don't think I'm actually familiar with that one yet. Is that the, the new blonde? Um, currently no plans, but won't write anything off. All right, folks, that's going to do it. Thank you all for, one, watching the video. Thank you for hitting the like button, like I, I know you did. Um, but really, just thanks for hanging out, having a conversation. Thanks for the questions. And hopefully, I don't know, I guess we, we learned what, what some relatively budget IMs measure like. That doesn't tell us everything about them, however. So, uh, like I mentioned, I'm probably not going to do a review of this Stardust, but I am planning to do a review of the Tanya. If you're interested in checking that out, be sure you're subscribed to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, etc. And if you want to take a look at those measurements, be sure to head to squig.link. That's S-Q-U-I-G dot L-I-N-K. And that's where I throw up all my measurements uh, as I take them. But uh, I guess until the next video, have a good week. Cheers.